You're watching Free Speech TV, a network powered by the people. This is the occupation spring in the United States of America. Welcome back to Occupy the Media. To join the conversation, call us at 877-575-FSTV or follow the conversation on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Tell us what you think about today's topics and we'll be reading some of those comments throughout the show. And in this segment, we wanna talk about how the corporate media, the 1% media, is covering the issues that impact the rest of us, the 99%. And with us uh, via Skype is Hannah Raffay, publisher of the American Independent. Thanks for joining us, Hannah. Thanks for having me. Okay, so uh, our first topic is how when it comes to banks, most executives are focused on the bottom line. Well, a former executive of Goldman Sachs is leaving because he's sick of the bank's greedy ways. Let's take a look at this clip from the Colbert Report. I am disgusted to learn about this op-ed in today's The New York Times by Wall Street executive Greg Smith titled, Why I Am Leaving Goldman Sachs, in which he reveals that to become a leader at Goldman, you must persuade your clients to invest in the stocks that you are trying to get rid of because they are not seen as having a lot of potential profit and that not one single minute is spent asking questions about how Goldman can help clients. Well, of course, time is money and they don't want to waste their clients' money by spending time thinking about them. <laughs> and this banker Dick Arnold <laughs> even had the gall to attack my good friend, Goldman Sachs CEO, Lloyd Blankfein. Just because Lloyd once said, Goldman Sachs is doing God's work. <laughs> and it is. He just didn't say which God. <laughs> Maybe it was Shiva, Lord of Destruction. <laughs> Okay, and, and Stephen Colbert's mock outrage there over the Greg Smith saga is pretty much in line, a parody of what a lot of uh, the financial media, their reaction being, hey, we're, Goldman Sachs is there to make money, not to be nice. Uh, Hannah Raffay, what, uh, what was your take from over there at the American Independent about the, the aftermath of the Greg Smith op-ed? We've been talking about it, and what really has struck us is that over over the last couple of years, we've really been hearing about how big banks like Goldman are bad for the 99% with their risky business bets and uh, and greedy investments. But now, what Smith is saying, and this is something we've been hearing from other former Goldman execs, is that these types of investments and these types of, of uh, models are actually also bad for the 1%. And that's what really struck us about Smith's op-ed. And it was also interesting to see the reaction because uh, the, I think the biggest reaction, it can be said, is actually from people that work in financial services, other Wall Street executives, other people that work there, the idea that one of their own could come out in, in such a public way and uh, if you give credence to a lot of the complaints that people involved with the Occupy Wall Street movement have been, um, have been voicing. But uh, Hannah, wh what do you think the, the average person who reads Goldman Sachs, or I'm sorry, uh, Greg Smith's analysis there, wh what do they make of it? Is it a surprise to them? I don't think it's a surprise. I mean, a lot of what we're seeing in the op-ed and a lot of what we've been hearing for over the last while with Occupy, it's the same message. Banks are putting profits over people. 
And what, what Smith is saying, what's really interesting is that even though 1% is being put below the profits of these bank managers and executives. And Don, uh, it was really interesting because in, in his uh, op-ed, he notes that part of his job was to go out and recruit students from colleges to come and work at Goldman Sachs and how he could no longer look them in the eye. And this got me thinking about just the all these really bright, intelligent students, tops of their classes that have right. in the past gone to work on Wall Street because they right. could make so much money. Right. But now, you know, what's going on there? Is it well, not cool anymore to be working on Wall Street? Uh, apparently, it is not as cool as it was, certainly before the Occupy movement uh, brought the uh, Wall Street's economic inequality uh, to, um, to the fore. Uh, just last Octo uh, October, I think it was either October or November, one of the premier elite business schools in the country, Wharton, at the University of Pennsylvania, their students protested and uh, prevented a Wall Street executive from giving a speech at Wharton. So that's, I think you're going to start seeing a, a shift uh, among some of the, college, uh, the, the nation's brightest college students in, in, in not automatically uh, uh, taking the big bonuses and, 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 the, and the hefty paychecks from Wall Street, but beginning to examine where they fit into a world that is so unjust and, and so uh, unequal. Uh, Marcy. Yeah, to add to what Don is saying, uh, I read also late last fall um, an article that was saying that a lot of these Ivy League schools are uh, not seeing as many of their top students go to these Wall Street firms. Right. Uh, Wall Street firms are coming in and, and trying to recruit them and these students are saying, you know, we're going to take these lower paying jobs uh, that I enjoy more, that I, that I feel like I'm getting something out of that are, are that you know, help me as a person instead yeah. of just help my pocketbook. And I want to, I want to say also, uh, Matthew, that you know, there, I believe there are many, many Greg Smiths who are uh, sitting in their caves on Wall Street uh, and uh, uh, afraid to come public. So I got, you know, I've got, I've got to say that this guy, it took courage for him to say what he said in his And Hannah, his I see you nodding your head over there. What, what, what do you want to add? Yeah, I mean, we have been seeing other executives, other Goldman people who have been leaving who are saying, you know, I can't sleep at night knowing this is what I do. Greg Smith could no longer look the eyes of the students anymore and say, this is somewhere you should come and work. It's a great job because he knew that what he was doing was more damaging to the culture, not only at Goldman, but the culture of all of us. Uh, and, and he just couldn't do that. I, I agree with Don. I think there's a lot more Greg Smiths out there. And uh, Marcy, Greg Smith hasn't said that he's going to join the Occupy Wall Street movement at all, but uh, real quickly, there have been other Wall Street people have worked on Wall Street that have given support to the movement. Definitely. I think one of the, the groups uh, within Wall Street, Occupy the SEC, you know, made up of lawyers and, and former uh, executives and, and former employees of Wall Street. Uh, that have come out and in support of the Occupy movement and, and said, as insiders, we want to help reform things and change it and make it fair. All right, so you've heard enough from us, and now we want to hear from you. The lines are open, so give us a call at 877-575-FSTV or connect with us on our Facebook and Twitter pages. And on those social media pages, we asked if you think Greg Smith's resignation might lead to an investigation into the way Goldman Sachs operates. And here's what some of you are saying on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. Andrew writes, I doubt it. Seems to me that having money will get you out of everything. Shannon chimes in with, absolutely not. This is America, and we only investigate and prosecute the poor here. Adam writes, every company suspected of wrongdoing should be investigated by the SEC, or should be investigated. That's the job of the SEC. So uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. So uh, Hannah Rafferty, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to take another quick break, but we want to hear from you to join the conversation. Call us at 877-575-FSTV, post a comment on our Facebook page, or follow us on Twitter. And recently, there's been a lot of speculation on about the future of one of Wall Street's biggest banks. If it comes down to it, do you think Bank of America should get another handout from taxpayers? We asked what the 99% what they think. I don't think that Bank of America should receive a bailout just because there's a lot of people struggling in the economy right now. No, I don't think they should at all. I think they should uh, declare bankruptcy if they have to and restructure and start over again. No, they shouldn't. You know, uh, they've already had one. Why well, get a second? Don't think that Bank of America should get a bailout. Um, I think no company should because it teaches them to just continue to be reckless and not to have any um, uh, consequence for that action. You know, there are lots of other ways that. The 
money could be spent, could be used for education, could be used to, for unemployment benefits. Or we could reform the education system by treating teachers better and educating lower income people. Funding health care for the population in general, women in particular. But I think this whole country needs another constitutional convention and um, so the money could go towards that instead of perpetuating the system that's clearly broken. There are new numbers out on poverty in the United States and they are staggering. The poverty level is up again for the fourth year in a row and there are now more poor people in America than any time since census records started 52 years ago. More than 46 million Americans were living in poverty in 2010. That's more than 15 percent of American households. And nearly 50 million Americans don't have health insurance, 16.3% of all households. If you're the CEO of a major company, not a bad year. This data, all from the Wall Street Journal, it is good to be the king. The CEOs of major companies last year saw their salaries up 11% to an average of 9.3 million. Not bad if you can get it. Hello, I'm Antoinette June, and this is your Occupy Update. This spring, the 99% will take on Bank of America. On April 15th, occupiers will move their money from corporate banks, put their bodies on the line, and bring the crimes of the corporate banks to light. For more information, visit fthebanks.org. You're watching Free Speech TV, a network powered by the people. Tune into Free Speech TV for Democracy Now!, a national, independent, award-winning news program bringing you people and perspectives rarely seen on corporate media. Former Goldman Sachs Executive Director Greg Smith recently resigned from that banking giant, and today in a New York Times op-ed, he blew the whistle on a toxic and destructive, his words, environment within the bank. Smith writes, I believe I have worked here long enough to understand the trajectory of its culture, its people, and its identity. And I can honestly say that the environment now is as toxic and destructive as I have ever seen it. Smith went on to write that banksters at the firm callously rip their clients off and routinely refer to their customers as Muppets. More shocking, Smith reveals that the most common question he got from fellow banksters was how much money did we make off that client? The sad part is banksters like Goldman Sachs now make up more than a fifth of our economy when they used to make up about a tenth. That means one fifth of all the money in the United States comes from banksters on Wall Street using unapproved and often dangerous financial instruments that suck money out of the rest of the economy and, but make the banksters into literally billionaires. They prey on other Americans from gambling on food and oil prices to scamming their customers with exploding mortgages and overdraft fees to crashing entire national economies. 